It is great to be back in the Maker Lab at Micro Center, and we're here today with this behemoth of a 3D printer. It's the FL Sun S1, and it's brand new for this year. It's a very, very large printer, and it's also not your typical Cartesian or bed slinger slash Core XY printer. It's a Delta printer. Now we've been selling FL Sun Delta printers for a while now, but this is one of their latest and greatest, and we're gonna dive in and tell you what's so cool about it. First, let's talk a little bit about Delta printers and what makes them different. We're gonna take a little trip down history lane, my own personal history. Now, about 10 years ago, when I was first getting into 3D printing, one of the first kits that I had access to was a Delta printer. And so one of the first printers that I ever built was called a Zego Robotics Delta 3D printer. This printer was great, and it taught me a whole lot about the movement system, which is the Delta. I have very fond memories of that first Delta printer and troubleshooting it and getting it lined up, but we have come a long way, especially with the FL Sun S1 and really all the FL Sun Delta printers. With the Cartesian, you have a platform typically that moves in either the Y dimension or the Z dimension, depending on whether it's Core XY or a bed slinger. You also have the head and the nozzle moving on a gantry. So there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of weight that is causing what's called slop or backlash sometimes in the system. With the Delta, the benefit has always been touted that the head unit can be much lighter. You don't have a moving bed, it stays stationary at all times. And ultimately, you can get a lot of speed because the gantry or the bars that are holding the head are normally lightweight and sometimes made out of carbon fiber. So there are a number of benefits to the Delta system compared to the Cartesian and vice versa. There are some pros and cons in both camps. However, we're gonna talk about the S1 today from FL Sun. The most interesting thing about the FL Sun S1 is the speed. Now, if we go way back, even four or five years ago to my Ender 3 Pro, I was comfortable printing around 50 millimeters per second, maybe inching it up to 80 millimeters per second. And that was pretty much stock. That wasn't pushing the boundaries. That wasn't doing anything crazy. This one touts a max speed of 1200 millimeters per second, which is insane. Now, a slight caveat, 1200 is the max. Most likely you'll see this printer going between 300 and 600 millimeters per second based on the default profile in the FL Sun Slicer. So that's still really fast. Even the bamboo machines that go 600 or 500 millimeters per second are really only going anywhere between two and 400 at any given point. So this thing is cooking. So along with the speed, you have a whole other host of features you've come to expect from a modern printer. You have connectivity. So built-in is Wi-Fi, so that you can connect it to your network and then access it via the FL Sun Slicer. This allows you to slice, send and print all from your computer without having to take a USB drive to the printer. If you don't have access to a network, you still have the option to copy the files over via a USB drive. Alongside with that connectivity, you have OTA updates or over the air. That way you'll be able to update the firmware from the screen on the printer itself. Let's talk a couple of tech specs. The build volume of this printer is 320, by 430. Now, that 320 is the diameter across the circular plate. So you do lose some corners. However, that's still more build volume than most normal 3D printers. So this is a printer you would look at if you were really interested in printing large. As mentioned previously, this printer is large itself. And a lot of that has to do with the Delta style printer that it is. When you have a Delta style printer, one of the potential drawbacks is that you have included height because of how the arms need to move up and down. What FL Sun did, which is really cool in this case and also on their T1, is that they use this opportunity to put the filament storage inside of the printer. What's cool about that is that it's all enclosed and the FL Sun S1 has a drying option built in. The hot end can get up to 350 degrees Celsius. That's awesome for more complicated materials such as PETG, nylon, ABS, ASA, just to name a few. Now, with those materials, it also benefits sometimes from a hotter bed temperature. The bed temperature on this machine can get up to 120 degrees Celsius. And also, when you're making these parts with this intricate material, you often want a controlled chamber temperature as well. The chamber can be maintained at 50 degrees Celsius. So with all of these improved and enhanced temperatures, this machine is great for printing more difficult filaments. B 
Beyond the temperatures, this machine also has fully automatic bed leveling alongside a LiDAR detecting sensor. What this allows you to do is basically similar to what the bamboos do and do a first layer inspection. So we've talked some of the basic specs so far, but let's talk about some of the intricacies and some of the cool new tech that's in this. The S1 has a binocular structured light system. What that means is that it actually has two really small cameras and a very, very small laser and LiDAR sensor so that it can sense irregularities in the layer. What that does is allow you to take a picture or take a map of the first layer and make sure it's as expected and perfect every time. Alongside the awesome LiDAR function is AI built into this printer. Now, the AI has two tops or tera or trillion operations per second. And what that means is that it can do some really cool features such as spaghetti detection, where it will look and see if your print screws up and creates a pile of spaghetti. It can see if there's debris on the bed. It can also help with the first layer detection. And then also it can help with clogs using the integrated camera. So with all of those features, this printer becomes more reliable and helps you troubleshoot if there is a problem. This printer is recommended to go at about 0.1 millimeters in terms of height. It can go anywhere from 0.1 to 0.35 and in between. The nozzle is hardened steel and it is a direct drive extruder. So you would have success with filaments that are flexible such as TPU. Now, the bed itself is a flexible circular bed with a PEI coating. That's one of my favorite types of beds to print on. The parts remove easily and you can take it off and clean it. If you're gonna clean your bed, make sure to do that with isopropyl alcohol or some light Dawn dish soap. This will make sure that you have a great first layer that sticks well to the PEI sheet. With this printer, let's talk airflow. There is a 40,000 RPM CPAP style fan on the top that sends a rush of air down to the head to help cool parts. And that will change variably depending on the type of part and the orientation and what it needs to cool. What that'll do though, is it'll create a positive pressure with inside the chamber. So there is an exhaust and that exhaust has a two stage filter on it, including HEPA filtration and activated carbon. So the air that you're putting back out into your environment has passed through the filter first. That was a lot. There are a lot of cool specs and a lot of cool features on this printer, speed being one of the coolest. Also, the fact that it's a triangular Delta style printer is also very cool. It's large, like we said, around 41 inches tall and about 22 inches wide, and it weighs about 80 pounds. So make sure you have a friend with you when you go to move this for the first time. All right, so let's take a look at some of the models in front of us that we printed using the FL Sun S1. We have a few prints that were built into the SD card that were sample prints that we tested. We use some inland filament for this one and some of the included filament for these. You might notice some similarities to some of these characters to some other people you might know too, including our friend Cam. In another video coming up very shortly, we'll be talking about 3D scanning and some of the new scanners that we carry. So make sure to stay tuned to that. Now, if you think printing small, cool heads is neat, what if you wanted to print something larger? That's where the FL Sun S1 shines, not just the speed, but the build volume. Right here, we have a version of Cam's head that we were able to print, which is hollow inside, so we could put a lamp in it. And this is actually larger than his actual size head. These glasses are larger than his actual glasses. And overall, this print came out pretty well. There were some learning things with printing something this large and hollow that I think we could get better on a second run, but we'll save that for another time. All right, so let's talk about this last model we have over here. This is a vase that I used the spiralized mode in the slicer on. What that means is that it makes a few base layers and then the head spiralizes all the way up till the lamp is finished. Once that's done, we were able to put this over top of an LED smart bulb that we sell at Micro Center and change the color by using our phones. So that's a really cool, easy project you can do if you have a 3D printer that can print big objects. The FL Sun S1 comes in at $14.99, which I think is pretty reasonable considering the build volume, the speed, and the build quality. This thing is solid and it's heavy. Availability-wise, we're looking at having these in micro centers soon. So make sure to check your microcenter.com page for your local store to see when they're in stock. 
We've got a bunch of great videos coming out soon, including Raspberry Pi and network attached storage, some looks at 3D scanners and 3D scanning in that process, and so much more. So make sure to stay tuned, and we'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.